I'm about to about to get my dude on the line right quick. You know what I'm saying? Not only he's a entertainer, you know what I'm saying, but he's also in the road service field right now. And um being that he has to go out here in the midst of this pandemic right now, just want to get his view on what's going on out here. You know what I'm saying? And so let's uh let's try and get him on the line right quick. What's up, bro? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, you love the shit. I don't know how to work this oh, shit, man. Hold on right quick, man. There you go. What's going on, bro? What's up, Doc? What's going on, man? Yeah. Hey, um, just want to let you know right quick, I got you on my podcast. I want to ask you a couple of couple of questions right quick about uh you 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 still doing the roadside game, right? Yeah, I, I took a break for about mm, a month, but I'm, you know, I'm I'm rescued first responding for life. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Since the beginning of this outbreak, um, what 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 has it been for you out there, man? Well, overall, uh, when it first started, it was slow. Mm-hmm. But now it's starting to pick back up because of the urgency of people in need. So now it's changed. It was slow for all all truck drivers really at first. Docks were empty. Uh, traffic was low. It was easy to get through places. But now what has happened on the flip side is the urgency for people to have goods, everyday life products. So truckers and drivers and service people uh are the important ones are the the um at the forefront of the fight so <laughs> don't i know man you know they used to you know back then they used to like treat us like second class citizens and shit you know oh, yeah. but now but now since they since they need the products then they they change their tune all the way around you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, me and you have always known the importance of truckers and your, your CDL drivers and your your first responding as far as your rescue and recovery. Um, it's always been there, and the people that's in the industry have always felt slighted or looked over because it's even an industry where you don't even have a lot of insurance and stuff like that, coverage-wise, if somewhere to happen to the person that is uh, right in the middle of that fight. They're they're as as important as a firefighter is to a neighborhood. That's what's up, man. Listen, Dollar Bill, man. Like I said before, you you say you took a break. Uh, why don't you tell the people what you uh what you what you do out here, man? Oh man, I I really like. I don't like to talk about stuff that i do but you asked the question so i what well, no, no, no 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 well let me narrow it down because you you're a man you you're a man of uh of a million hats <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. you're a man of a million right. hats so let me narrow it down what, what do you do pertaining to a uh, roadside well i've been <clears throat> i've been in the rescue and recovery as far as accident scenes and um, just any type of vehicle, pulling it out of a ditch. I've been doing all that type of stuff for about 16, 17 years. You know, I train people. I've been trained. Uh, I learned from the top dogs in Cleveland as far as the tow industry, African, African-American-wise, mm-hmm. uh, the likes of uh, Ed Lawson and Big John. Yeah, yeah. Big John was up. What's up? Yeah. yeah. Big John shout out the to first them. Shout out to both of them because Big John was the first African American to have AAA in Cleveland. He also had a gas station, and then Ed Lawson 
showed me that I didn't have to work for nobody else, and I can. He showed me how to make, how to money. make money yourself, become independent. <laughs> A driver, he said, it's something about you that I like. So he took me under his wing and showed me everything underneath the sun. And I'm I'm highly uh, appreciative of both of those guys. That's what's up, man. That's how, like I said, I, I met you. I had the pleasure of meeting you uh, way back in the day. And then come to find out that me and you was in the same field. And we just, you know, we just vibe after that. Man. Yes, sir. Man. Like, I've been trained to move um, foreign cars. I go to tow shows, you know, some Maseratis and all that stuff. I've been trained to move all that. So I'm not just uh, a scrap man, you know, per se. Mm -hmm. I'm a damage-free recovery guy. There you go. When they send me out, they know, they know the car's coming back or I'm coming back. I tell everybody, once I throw that line out in the water, I'm coming back with a fish. There guaranteed. you go. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. You uh, you mentioned the you mentioned the tow shows, man. I I I, I was the one that got you hip to the Baltimore tow show. How how was uh how was that your first time going out there, man? You got me hip to the Baltimore tow show. You sure did. I, Cause I, I wouldn't have went. Um, it it was beautiful. You know, shout out to Baltimore, the city of Baltimore. You know, great city. You know, they got the boardwalk, and they got they got a lot of nice stuff down there. I got to go revisit it mm -hmm. outside of the, uh, the tow show. You know, but it was in the middle of the. You 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 know they moved it. it it's not in well. They moved Atlanta, they. Atlanta City. Yeah, the the last year's one was in Atlanta City. Okay. Did you get a chance to go to that yeah. one? No, I ain't go to the Atlanta City one, but um, all of those is probably set back. With this uh, virus is going on, so exactly. I'll probably catch everybody on twenty twenty one. I'm gonna probably hit about three four. I'm in twenty twenty one. Yeah, man. Twenty twenty. Yeah, we we gotta yeah, shut we, we gotta shut twenty twenty down. Twenty twenty is a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap. It, it's a wrap. So everybody, to get your knowledge up, uh, pay the bills back down, uh, save your money, uh, and get your credit together and established so that in twenty twenty one. Uh, we'll be better prepared if something like this does happen, happen again. Exactly. And it's going to it's going to happen. It's just a matter of did you learn from this or was you a knucklehead? So you know we hang around people that are wise. So I'm sure we're going to learn from this. Man, listen, it, it's it's been a it, it's like every year it is something, right? I mean, it's like yeah, every, but, it, but this right here. This is, this is Right here, Jack. Yeah, this right here, this right here is coming in and hitting is is hitting like a snowstorm, man. It is hitting like a and snowstorm. Too, you, and, you and me too. We got to be out here in it still. Exactly. Everybody else, everybody else can go home. It. We don't have that option. Exactly. If we don't go out here, stuff don't move. Exactly. And we don't eat. Exactly, so, man. You know. So right every day though. So right now, so right now you said you uh you 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 uh you you put well you ain't put the kibosh on it, but you've been chilling for the for the last uh couple of months. What what any any particular reason? No, it's only been um it's only been about uh about a month. Oh, uh, about a month. And the particular reason is yeah, the particular reason is I manage now and I train now. And a lot of the companies uh, have their guys in that's been with them for years. What I do, I go to a company that's a startup. I get their staffing up. I get their numbers up. I uh, bring in, you know, highly qualified people that's been in the industry for a while. And we make the company grow and, and flourish from there. Okay. Uh, a lot of the companies that are here now are, like I said, are established, been around for 30, 40 years. Their families. Uh, I don't want to go into a situation where I am a leaf on a tree. I would rather be a branch mm -hmm. or part of the uh, foundation part of the tree. To to make it, base. yeah, as far as the uh, base to make yeah. it grow. So back then. Yeah, they, and a lot of them, too, they, they think they know everything. So I just let them think they know everything. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when I started, uh, when, when I started my, my, well, I started out with a, with a small company called uh, Papa Lock back in the day. And I mm -hmm. just took all of the information, how he was getting his, you know, his clientele, how he was getting his contact, 
how the cause was working and everything. And I just pretty much took all that and ran with it myself. Running into running into you and a couple of guys and a couple of guys like you got me, you know, to see the big picture. So we sort of bounced wow. back, you know, bounced off of each other. You know what I'm saying? Because you hooked me up. You hooked me up with Lawson. You know, I did when I was doing the business cards. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. I did I did their business cards for them. But you know, I got I when I did their cards, just just being in that little aura, like. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. This this is a successful black man doing the damn thing. Let me let me yeah. you know let me drink some of that Kool Aid and I did. Um, yes, sir. With that, I remember. That. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just saying I remember that uh, vividly. Yeah. Exactly. Did you? It was just like you did. You said it did. Yeah. Yeah. So as of as of now, you know. I've been, you know, I've been out of the game for going on five years now because, you know, I've been driving, you know, I've been driving trucks for, you know, for the last five. How has, since I came out of the game, how has the game changed from the last five years to now? Well, when you were in the game uh, back then, we was getting about 325 to 350 a ton for uh, recycled metal, scrap metal. Mm -hmm. Now it is down to about $150 a ton. So that's a $200 difference per vehicle every day. So if you do the math on that, you're talking about probably a couple billion dollars when you go from five years ago to now. That's how much the market has fell with uh, recycled metals. That affects the game on what you can pay for a vehicle. Now more people are keeping their cars, which they're a little more raggedy. So now you're getting the toe on the other side because the cars aren't as good as a newer car. So exactly. people are blowing the motors and then they're taking the car to the shop instead of scrapping them. You know, so it's stuff like that. It's drastically changed. It's it's um, saturated with a lot of new triple a backup garages mm -hmm. you know that's another thing that they do now they open up the grid on triple a mm -hmm. oh triple a damn oh my god wait 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 triple a opened up because bad when i i tried to get triple a for the longest time i mean i had right. i had gotten in i had gotten in with um i gotten in with every company that i could possibly get in with but triple A was like number one on the list. And I, I couldn't I couldn't get in with triple A with nothing. You know what I'm saying? I told him I had uh I told him I had a few cars, I had a you know, a few guys. I I couldn't get in. I, I couldn't get in for nothing. And that was like back in the day. I was like I said, right. I wasn't doing like the tolls, at least not yet anyway. The goal the goal at the time was to get, you know, my own tow truck and then run from there. But, but like just for regular roadside, you know, the, the door, the door unlocked, the, the fuel delivery, the, um, the tire changes and all like that from, I say from in the beginning, it was great. I was pulling in like, like for a lockout, I was pulling in from a company not not uh, uh you know not the private sector but as for a company being contracted i was pulling in like 60 dollars a car then oh yeah 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 lockout can go from you know 60 to 75 or 90 dollars depending on, on the car exactly and, and the situation the time of day you know the elements so you know it gets up there but then but then like you said it got saturated everybody in yeah. a mama uh, I say, when did I start? Like 2015. I say like 20. I'm gonna say 20. I'm gonna say 2012. That's when I started to see the change. And then by 20. Yeah. And then by 2014, I I start seeing companies calling me back. I start getting less and less calls. And I'm over here wondering, like, yo, what's what's going on? So I had to call the you know, the, the district manager at the time. And I'm like, 
bruh, what what what's what's going on? Oh, well, we got companies that's doing it for like ten dollars, twenty dollars. And I'm like, and I, I said, Are you sure they got insurance? Because you know, y- y'all talking about we you you talking about we gotta have liability insurance and everything, and y'all have to have it on file and shit. And you got somebody out there doing a lockout on a on a on a Mercedes Benz or or a BMW or hell or a Porsche and twenty five for twenty five dollars. I I said the damage I said the damage alone is going to put them out of business. Yeah, yeah. A damage on a lockout is about a thousand dollars normally. It, when you do the scratch, the the repainting, the resurfacing, the weather strip, it, it roughly runs about seven fifty to a thousand dollars on a damage when you only made fifty bucks. Most companies are making thirty dollars for a lockout, twenty five dollars for a lockout, ten dollars for a tire, tr- ten dollars for a tire change. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, but see, what happens is you kill the game, Triple A has a stranglehold on the tow industry because of the rates are so low. Right. That affects regular tow truck companies because they're going to get the car first because it's only a cheap rate. You're only getting a secondary call once people don't have AAA. And most people know somebody with AAA. So that's the balancing act of, yeah, it's, okay. it's right because you can't say that they can't do it, but it's wrong because of how cheap it's being done. So me, they should raise the rates. The, the membership fee of AAA should be higher than what it is so that AAA can pay more for the cause I, to the company. I think my mom. It's not right. I think my mom only paid like, what, $10, $10, $15? See what I'm saying? That's embarrassing. That's crazy. And they give you three toes because they're relying on a lot of people don't ever use AAA. So all those contracts that they get and people never use them, got brand new cars, never had a reason to use them. Mm-hmm. That's profit. That's how they're able to pay for the rest of all those other toes. Because a lot of people, a lot of older people don't never use it. They had a AAA for 15 years and only used it one time. And and only, you, yeah. and oh, yeah, use it one time for a lockout. But the only reason why they, the only other reason why they do use it is because of the, the, the senior discounts. That's about it. That is yeah, that's crazy. about it. Yeah. So that is exactly. crazy. Exactly. So that is crazy. It's, it's wild, man. It's really wild. All right. Well, Dollar Bill, man, thanks for coming on and uh and uh talking to your boy right quick, man. Hey, what 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 do you uh um, now I know like I said before, uh I don't want you to, you know, let every everything going on, but um what uh Tell the people about some of these uh community uh, community uh community you you big in the community. I'm trying to get my thought together and ask the right question. Yeah. You you big in the community. The last the last thing that you done was um something for the kids, man. What what was it? All right, I'm gonna show you how much I do. Cause the last thing I did was for the coronavirus. <laughs> And you see what I'm saying? You, you thought it was the kids, but I did something after that. Okay, you know? but I kept, um, I kept up with the kids. That's what I kept up with. Right, exactly. But two weeks ago, uh, me and my uh, one of my good friends' name is Romeo Barnes. Shout out to His Romeo. His mother passed away last year. Shout out to Rome. His mother passed away last year, Marlene. Okay. I was real cool with Marlene. Okay. So rest, last year. Rest he started, in peace. He, yeah, absolutely. So he rented a van in honor of her name, a U-Haul van. We got sponsors together. We packed the van with all kind of sanitary products, cleaning products, food, suits. We had men's suits. We had a exercise bike in there. We had all kind of stuff in the back of this van this year. Mm-hmm. But last year was the first year that we did it in honor of uh, Mama Marlene. This year, just so happened, the coronavirus was going on and people really needed what we was doing. So it hit right on that time, boom. And we was able to give away toilet paper, toothbrush, toothpaste, so whatever you could think of was in the back of that U-Haul. We went all across Cleveland. We went to, uh, what's up? What's up? 
Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. And we went to six different locations in Cleveland, opened it up, and whoever needed it came up to the van and got what they needed, and we closed the doors and took off to the next location. So that's the most recent thing that I did. Um, I did Hurricane Harvey a couple of years ago when we had, we had that disaster there. I drove from Cleveland. Down to Houston. Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee, the, the Nashville Predators. It's an NHL hockey team mm-hmm. called the Nashville Predators, mm-hmm. professional hockey team. They donated 10 skids worth of products, full skids, and I picked them up personally. I drove uh, the truck from here to the stadium in Nashville. Uh, I took donations in Cleveland. Nashville gave gave me so much stuff. I was pack loaded, top to bottom, front to back, and that truck was overweight going from Tennessee to Texas. And I drove that boy down there myself. I, I got off at Post Avenue. Post Avenue was a uh, the street on the highway where it was a, a old guy walking with his daughter on his shoulders in the water. It was a picture of him. I got off at that exact exit and made a right hand turn, and we went to a church. My dude rode with me shotgun, but he ain't had no license. Just I opened the back of that truck up, hit the lift gate, and started slamming skids. And the people was jumping inside the skids. They wasn't waiting. They were jumping in the skids. <laughs> you know, Mexicans, Latinos, all kind of people, blacks, whites, all together, though. Okay. And the main thing was, it was for our people. So that was that was pretty huge, though. That was a soul call right there. That's what's up. Um, a, a young lady, I'm going to tell you one more. Because I do schools, we do giveaway, book bag giveaways and all that stuff. Every too. year. But another one is every year, multiple. We did uh, three toy giveaways for Christmas last year. Three three of them, not one, three. We went to Lorraine, Ohio, and we did two in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, last year, too, about a year ago, two years maybe, a young girl was murdered up here in Cleveland. And her, um, she was very young. She was about seven, eight years old. She was shot in broad. She was shot in broad daylight. Wow. So my boy, yeah, my boy called me and asked me, "What are we gonna do for the family?" I didn't know the family. It was strangers to me, and it touched me so much that I called him back. I said, "This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put five people on five different corners, three days straight, and we're gonna collect as much money as we can." And we ended up raising $4,000 for that family. Now, every penny went to that family. Okay, I asked permission from her father. I'm real cool with her father now. And the rumor was that a mob boss had paid for her funeral because he had offered, but her family had turned the offer down because they didn't want... They didn't want to be associated. Associated, yeah. It wasn't no disrespect. It just, it was their, yeah. That was their baby girl, though. You know what I'm saying? So, in essence, what we had, the city of Cleveland donated it. I just did the work, and I just organized it. And my boy, he gave me the spark. He put the spark in my ear. My dude, Tay, you know, he was like, bro, what are we going to do? So, um, like I said, $4,000, that went towards helping the family lay that beautiful baby to rest the proper way. That's what's and that was a huge, huge... Uh, deal right there because people was putting us on Instagram. They was calling the police on us. They was taking pictures of us like we was doing something wrong. wrong. Yeah, and all they had to do it's it's all it's yep. it's it's man. Let me give you a bomb drop. And it's always always some people that's you know you you trying to do good out there, but then there's people out here that's that's over here looking at look, looking at people like you that's trying to do good, but they thinking that you're trying to be, you know, you're doing bad, and they want to try and shut yep. it down for whatever reason, man, without even without even coming up to you and be like, can I help, or what's this about? Exactly. You know, coming, you know, come and ask. Don't, don't assume anything, but it's a damn, not it's, with, it's not da- with this guy. yeah, it's a damn shame of the, of, of the life we're living in right now, man. But as a but you know what I learned, I'm not scared. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so many people are scared to do right. You know, it's a challenge to them. I'm not scared to do right, even if it comes with a little bit of backlash. And that's what you got to get over, or the, is the embarrassment. They could have threw rocks with it at us. They didn't though, because mm-hmm. we used to, we still you know we we, we are who we are. Exactly, exactly. But they could have threw rocks and bottles at us and tomatoes and stuff. 
but they didn't. But I was willing to take that chance for that cause because I knew I was doing right. So it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So every time we do something that's good, it don't matter what people think because we know we're doing it for the right reason. Exactly. And that's what's up. Then that's all that's matter, man. That is all that matters, man. Well, hey, Dollar Bill, man, thank you for coming on right quick, chopping it up with your boy. And, yo, you say you drove that truck, man. You, I, Hey, you, you threw a curveball at hey. me, bro. Like... You say you drove the truck. Where you where you get your license from? Where where did you go to get your uh, CDLs from, bro? No, 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 no. Look, look, don't worry. Look, I can't even explain that part. Oh, okay, 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 (laughs) okay. I drove thirty. Let me see. It was thirty two hours straight down there because I had to stop in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to sleep. I drove straight down there, and then I drove thirty hours straight back. And I slept at a rest stop for about two or three hours at, at about four in the morning because I was getting so tired I was about to crash. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Slept. You you better you better pull your ass over, bro. You better have pulled your ass. Sure. So I, put, I pulled over as soon as that sun came up. I pulled over about three thirty, four o'clock. Mm-hmm. That sun came up about six thirty, six forty five. Hit the gas on that boy and kept on going, boy. So I, I drove there and back, I, just like that. Okay, well, you, yeah, yeah. You, had, you had to do the damn thing. You know what I'm saying? You, you, uh, you, the blues brothers of this motherfucker, man. You was on a mission from God. So, yeah, he want to make sure he want to make sure he want to make sure you get down there and he want to make sure that you got back home, man. So that's what's up, man. That is what's up. That is what's up. On a mission from God, and that's exactly what it be, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You, you, you <laughs> are definitely dope. you. Like I said, I, I, I appreciate my friendship with you, man. I appreciate the vibe. You know, that's that's why I fuss with you, man. Uh, like I said, I, I've been, right. a, I've been a follower. You know, I've been a follower of you on all your social media from from day one, appreciate and I see, I, I see everything, man. So definitely, definitely. Appreciate all right, man. Well, the, the people. Check. The people can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Dollar Bill Cleveland without the R. Dollar Bill Cleveland straight through. That's what's up, you man. Know, and, uh, and I'll go ahead. Like I said, I'll go ahead and uh, put it up for you and all like that. And on that note, we are gone.